Hi everyone, I'm Luciana Silva from the Biomolecular Simulations Group and in this video I'm going to give an overview of coarse grain models for molecular dynamics simulations. When we talk about simulating biological systems, we need to keep in mind two factors, the length and the time scale. When we talk about the length, we are talking about the size of the system we want to simulate. If you want to keep it as close as possible to the real biological system, we need to add components to it, such as proteins, membranes, solvents, and ions. And this increases the number of the particles we need to simulate. Now, when we talk about time scale, we are talking about the events we want to see in our simulation. Here are some examples of the events that we can see in a simulation. And we also can see here that some of them need a higher time scale to happen. And we can roughly classify molecular modeling applications by how many particles they can simulate and the usual time scale they can reach. It doesn't mean they are restricted to these limitations. For example, we can have an all atom simulation happening at the microsecond to millisecond time scale. But Depending on the size, it can take longer than a coarse grain simulation and need a higher computational power. Here we are concentrating on coarse grain models. The concept of coarse grain models is not a new one. Back in 1975, the classical work from Levitt and Warshad on protein folding showed a coarse grain model with pseudoatoms representing the backbone and the side chains. So, what are coarse grain models? Coarse grain models are simplified representations of molecular systems using computational chemistry and molecular dynamic simulations. In practical terms, this means that if we have a three dimensional structure of a molecule, we can reduce its complexity by grouping multiple atoms into single interaction sites. This allows us to simulate larger systems and longer time scales compared to all atom models. Here, I summarize some of the key aspects of coarse grain models. As I said before, with coarse grain models, we can reduce the number of particles by simplifying the system to their most important properties. This helps improving computational efficiency, allowing simulations of larger systems and longer time scales. An advantage of coarse grain models is that we can also have different resolution when representing biological systems. With finer resolution with more particles or coarser resolutions with less particles. A downside to simplifying the representation of coarse grain models is the loss of atomic level details and interactions. So if we want to simulate an event that needs atomic level details, we cannot use coarse grain models. Another downside is that the developing parameters for coarse grain models can be difficult and time consuming, need extensive validations against experimental data. Here, we have the same DNA system represented with an all-atom model and a coarse grain model, and we can see that the number of particles are greatly reduced. So, when we talk about molecular dynamic simulations, we also talk about force fields. Therefore, there are specialized force fields for coarse grain models. In these force fields, the interactions among particles here known as beads are described and implemented using different approaches. We can classify the coarse grain force fields by their implementation and parametrization. We have three types of force field implementations, the physics-based, the statistical-based, and the structure-based. In the physics based, coarse grain models incorporate expressions from physics based all atom force fields to represent the system. In statistical based, the energy function is built from experimental reference databases based on frequency of structure variables. In the structure 
face it, a structure or a set of structures are used to help the positioning and connecting of the beads based on the importance of the app. Some force fields, on the other hand, use hybrid versions that combine one or more implementations. We also have three types of parameterization of coarse grain force fields. They are top down, bottom up, and hybrid. Top down approaches use physical insights and experimental data to construct models while bottom-up approaches aim for systematic derivations based on fundamentals, and hybrids combine both approaches. Thus, while top-down methods use experimental data, bottom-up approaches derive coarse grain parameters directly from atomistic simulations or quantum mechanical calculations. Here, I'm going to name four popular coarse grain force fields and their classifications. Four popular coarse grain force fields are Martini, Sira, Spica, and Ambras. We can see here that Martini, Sira, and Spica uses a structure-based implementation, while Ambras uses a physics-based implementation. We can also see that all of them, but Sira, uses both bottom-up and top-down parameterization approaches. So what are the difference between the force fields? Mapping is the difference between the force fields. Map or screen force fields refers to the process of defining how atoms from a non-atom representation are grouped or combined to form the beads in the cross grain model. This is a fundamental step in create a cross grain model and significantly impacts the model's behavior and accuracy. So if we go back to the force field mentioned before and take a look at the amino acid mapping, we can find that we need one to six beads to represent a residue for martini, three to eight beads for Sera, one to four beads for Spica, and two beads for Unrest. Here, we can see a visual representation of the grouping and position of the beads using a peptide as an example. We can also see that the resolution goes from coarser with the two beads of unrest, one to the pep bone atoms and one to the side chain atoms, to a finer resolution with Sera using three beads to the pep bone atoms and up to five beads to the side chain atoms. So, what are the parameters available for simulations with coarse grain models? Most coarse grain models have amino acids parameters that can be used in protein simulations, peptide simulations, or IDP simulations. Some of them also have parameters for water molecules and counter ions. Lipids are also found in most coarse grain models and are widely used in membrane simulations. Nucleic acids can be found in some of the coarse grained models mentioned before or in other specialized coarse grain models created to DNA simulations. And another commonly found parameter in coarse grain models are metal ions. These ions can be used in simulations where coordinated interaction by metal ions are essential. I just want to highlight an interesting advantage of a good mapping approach. Although the mapping of a system to a coarse grain representation can simplify their complexity, a good mapping to coarse grain representation allows for reverse mapping or commonly known as pet mapping. This approach is very helpful and can restructure some components of the coarse grain simulated system to an atomistic representation after the simulation. Here we have an example of back mapping with the Sera force field. We start with an atomistic representation of a peptide 
and then we map its coarse grain representation using the Serra force field. Coarse grain water molecules and counter years are added to the system and simulated. After the simulation, we can use the back mapping approach to reconstruct the atomistic representation of the peptide. We can see here that water molecules and counter ions are not backmapped. They are usually not reconstructed due to their low equivalence to their atomistic counterparts. However, we have to be aware that backmapping can be challenging and may introduce artifacts to the system. Thus, it's recommended to verify the integrity of the structures after the backmapping. Going back to the force fields mentioned before, where are they implemented? Here we have where we can find this force field. Most of them can be found in popular molecular dynamic simulation programs, such as Gromax, NumD, and Number. And Numbers has its own code. However, topology setup and MED preparation are force field dependent and needs customized tools to help create a system to be simulated. Here we have a schematic representation of how to prepare and simulate a system with the Serra force field. We start by downloading the folder with the necessary parameters to build our system. Then we use a script that map the all atom representation to the Serra coarse grained representation. Then we build our topologies using the tools provided by Amber or Gromax, just like an all atom simulation. Then we run the simulation with one of these programs. We can run with Amber, Gromax, or NMD. Then we analyze the trajectories with the help of VMD and a script called Cira Tools. Cira Tools can do some analysis such as secondary structure and mapping. The last topic I want to talk about is multiscale approaches. The concept of multiscale approaches is very relevant to the workshop. So what are multiscale approaches? A multiscale approach combines different levels of resolution within a single simulation, allowing different parts of a system to be modeled at different levels of detail. When we talk about multiscale simulations, we talk about a dual resolution system combining a non-atom model with a coarse grain model, or combining a coarse grain model with a super coarse grain model. In a super coarse grain model, an entire molecule can be represented by a single bit or a few bits with increased size. Or we can combine all three models in a triple resolution system. The use of this approach allows for efficient use of computational resources by focus high resolution only where necessary. An example of a multiscale approach that combines all three resolutions is the multiscale solvent approach found in the Serra force field. With this approach, a system can be created and simulated using water molecules with three different resolutions a finite grained all-atom water molecule, a coarse grain water molecule that accounts for a cluster of all-atom water molecules, and a super coarse grain water molecule that accounts for a cluster of coarse grain water molecules. In this approach, we can have a shell of all-atom water molecules surrounded by coarse grain water molecules, which in turn can be surrounded by super coarse grain water molecules. Thus, for systems that need a great number of solvents, we can reduce the total number of particles and reduce the water-water interactions that can dominate the computational cost of simulations. This guides the computational resource to the important high-resolution areas. So, it's within the multiscale framework that we can build a virus-like particle system to be simulated. Here is an example using the Serra force field of the Zika virus-like particle built with the multiscale solvent approach. 
we have the super coarse grain water molecules forming water shells inside and outside of the virus like particle while coarse grain water molecules surround the coarse grain membrane and proteins that form the virus like particle. This forms a capable system to be simulated. This approach not only creates a system capable to be simulated, but also creates a good balance between accuracy and speed up, making it viable to perform highly demanding molecular dynamic simulations on desktop computers with a single graphics card. This is particularly relevant to places where supercomputed resources are scarce and virus outbreaks such as the Zika virus usually happen. In this plot, we can see the performance of three virus-like particle simulations using solvent in three different combinations of resolution. The three virus-like particle size goes from small to big. Only one desktop graphic card was used. Here we can see that the only the smallest virus could be simulated using an all-atom water molecule approach without blowing up the memory of the GPU. For the triple resolution approach, it was possible to simulate the smallest virus and the medium-sized virus, but not the biggest one. Now, with the dual resolution combination using coarse grain and super coarse grain waters, all systems could be simulated and never blow up the GPU memory, while also increase the number of nano, nanoseconds per day in the simulations. With results from virus like particle simulations, a new challenge is in the horizon. Now is the time to model an entire cell. As we can see here, the starting model of a cell is already constructed using coarse grain models. However, the current challenge is to perform an actual molecular dynamics simulation, since the current programs that we have now have difficulties controlling systems with hundreds of millions of particles. But this is just a matter of time. With continuous advantage in computational resources, we can expect a simulation of an entire cell real soon. Well, I would like you to thank you for the attention, and if you have any questions, you can send me an email, or I can see you soon at the workshop.